All right, everybody, welcome to the live stream. Uh, a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right in. So as the title and thumbnail suggest, uh, it's been quite an interesting day here in the uh, cryptoverse, crypto world, whatever you want to call it, as uh, we saw a little bit of a pullback and then a big jump for Bitcoin. And in under uh, roughly four hours, we saw like a $1,000 gain or roughly almost 2%. But uh, that's not the story. The story is just how volatile this market is. And if this is your, your first uh, rodeo, especially after buying at the top, I need to show you some things uh, so you can get ready for the next big ups. So the first thing though, I need to talk about is uh, you may notice that yesterday uh, I had a little video, which I uh, talked about Dave Ramsey. <clears throat> this is a video from like 2012. And Dave said that he uh, pretty much called everybody an idiot who invested into Bitcoin. And then, of course, we took a look at a, a video from 2021 and 2022 where he said pretty much the same thing. He says that now he, he moved from Bitcoin to Dogecoin and to altcoins. And he said, everybody buys that some moron. And uh, we talked about this yesterday and I made it very clear. I mean, first of all, I actually like Dave Ramsey. <clears throat> I think he does great work with people who are massively in debt and helps to uh, pull them out. But, uh, you know, on this one, he's wrong. He's been wrong for a long time. And it's just how it is. Nobody's beat was going to be 100%. Unfortunately, I had to take that video down. And the reason why I had to take that video down is because I got a copyright strike uh, from Dave Ramsey and, uh, and his, his uh, people or his handlers or whatever that actually goes on uh, behind the scenes. And uh, I think this is automatic. I don't think this is like Dave Ramsey just sitting around in his shorts, uh, just looking for people to uh, pull up copyright. I think this just actually happens because of the audio. There's something that with uh, YouTube that can be done where they see a specific piece of audio and of course, there's an algorithm that says, hey, this is your actual video. Do you want to claim this? And of course, it's automatic and uh, down it goes. So uh, that one I had to take down. <clears throat> but the thing that I wanted to make to, to, to clarify here is this, is uh, I'm glad that we get to stream on two platforms now. Now, before, I, people will say, well, you got to use Rumble. Uh, you got to use uh, Theta. You got to use all these different ones. That's great. They work fine. But I got to tell you, what's great is to be able to, to stream live on YouTube and on Twitter or X. And uh, I've uh, given a little heat to Elon Musk because of the bot problem. But man, I got to tell you, it's fantastic. If something gets taken down on one platform, we can have another platform. You can watch it over there. So I just want to say that's what's going on. If uh, I got a lot of questions about that. And uh, that was just a copyright strike. So this is the thing that's happening today. Big jump. I mean, big, big jump. Uh, especially with, I mean, from when I was looking at this this morning, you can see if, like I wake up around 4.30 in the morning. I just do all the time. And uh, I looked at the at uh, the price action. I'm like, oh, it's a normal day, you know, hovering around 35K. And then around six or so, I just started to take a big nosedive. And then by eight in the morning, I was like, wow, it's, I think this might be the correction everybody keeps talking about. And this is the thing about, about the market. You think it's going to go one way and you're not really for sure. I saw some people who were panicking. They're like, you know what? I'm going to sell right here because I think it's going to go lower. And of course, there's TA people out there and they'll, you know, that's their thing. That's not my thing. But uh, for me, I'm just like, this is fantastic because uh, <clears throat> I always have my, my, my uh, DCAs uh, to go off on Coinbase right around uh, like 10, 11, 12, somewhere around there, depending on which, which, the, uh, which if it's Bitcoin or the altcoins or whatever else. So I was pretty happy. <clears throat> And then I was doing this, this video, I was putting everything together today and I was like, well, I'll just talk about the little pullback. But then I looked over at this and you can just see here from like two o'clock to, geez, that's only three hours. From roughly two o'clock, let me just, let me go over here. This is probably better. This is probably the, the, the best I could do. Excuse me, 1 p.m. At 105, it was 34,628. And you know, people panic and start selling, that's fine. And uh, then look at this, just did it, 35,749. Now we've kind of flattened out. Let's see what it's, let me refresh it. Maybe it's, oh, look a little bit of a dip. But yeah, I mean, look at that. That's a major candle. And if we take a look over here, as far as like the market itself, uh, in one hour, it's still a 0.4%, 24, seven days. BNB's up nine, I mean, look at this. 15% for XRP, Solana up 18% for seven days, 9% for 24 hours. This is the beauty of, uh, of not chasing candles and not stressing yourself out. Because to me, like, I just look at this, I'm like, well, I went either way, so it really doesn't matter. I know where, I believe where things are going. So, I mean, these, these uh, different price fluctuations, I'm not really too concerned about it because that's just, 
that's just crypto and digital assets. But I have to understand, and I kept getting uh, pinged and questioned about like, hey, it's you know, there's there's big fall, there's big action. What should, you know, what uh, what are you going to do, Rob? What are you going to do? I do the same thing, but I hear that in um, people who reach out. So I go, well, maybe it's because it's their first rodeo, and that happens. So I just want to show you a couple of things. First of all, <sighs> the hash rate is still almost at an all-time high. This is on Ben's website in the Cryptoverse. Oh, speaking of which, if you're looking to sign up for Ben's website, uh, you can use my link in the description. And also, he's having a sale. Starts today. Hey, good for you. So, uh, yeah, if you take a look at hash rate, I mean, we're still almost at like an all-time high. That means that there is a lot of miners who are betting on Bitcoin, and they're dumping a lot of money into it. And that's just a lot of uh, manpower, com computational power, and a lot of money going into that. Also, if we also take a look at uh, in the block. We did this yesterday on the Q&A section. And we'll take a look at just a token summary. Did you know? I was not aware of this. But people making money at the current price, 78% are in the money. And as that, as that green goes up, and as the price goes up, you're going to see more people in the money, which are going to make people hold on even more because they're like, well, I'm not going to sell because, look, there's a potential an ETF coming down. We don't know what's going to happen with the macro environment, but it could be a hedge against inflation. It could be a hedge against the uh, coming collapse of the traditional stock market and equities. It could be a lot of problems that are going on globally. So I'm just going to hold on to this because I've been holding out for how long? Oh yeah, 69% of people have, have been holding their Bitcoin for a year or longer. And if you take a look for between one and 12 months, it's almost like 70, 93%, 90, well, 94, well, 93, 94. It's a little bit off, whatever. 93, 94% are just holding Bitcoin, just holding. It's just the 6% of people and maybe, you know, some of the 24%, I, I, I got you, are just kind of like trading it, moving it around and so on and so forth. Also, remember, this also includes uh, Bitcoin that is dormant. So, yeah, you can see that. And uh, I don't really care about this stuff. But what is interesting to me is this right here, inflows and outflows. I find it fascinating that right now you still had seven days, 6.13 billion of inflows of Bitcoin going into the exchanges. Usually when you put things into the exchanges, you're looking to sell. Then in seven days, you had 6.17 people taking it out into their cold storage devices or moving around for different uh, wallets or whatever they want to do. I found it was just interesting, the inflows and outflows of how tight things are, which means I think most people know where things are going, but there's that small percentage of people who just want to trade it and move it around, and that's fine. Go up to them. But the thing is with this is you have to remember that if this is the first time around, or maybe it's the second time around, as a reminder, I'm going to show you two things. First of all, nothing goes up in a straight line. It just does not happen. It's not like that. It's difficult. And uh, when you look at these things, you're like, oh, this is, just, this is just a normal day. This is just a Tuesday. And that is essentially what it actually is. And this was the, uh, the market in 2017, 2016 to 2018. And you can see it. That was a monster. I remember living through this. It was fantastic. And you would see like these massive pullbacks Massive, massive to get up to here. Now I want to show you is this. I put this together this morning because I was just curious. I'm like, well, how did that look in 2021? This is what it looks like in 2021. Did you know that at the beginning of the year, we went from actually we man, we went, we went actually from sub 30,000 to 40,000 at the beginning of the year, January 1st, 2021, to roughly around January 15th, January 20th, somewhere around there. That's a big move. And then we dropped 25%. So we look at the, today and these little drops, this is nothing. I mean, uh, people are excited like last week about the big you know, push. I'm like, you've not seen anything. And then, of course, we went from uh, February uh, into March, and we increased by 89%. I mean, 30,000 to almost 60,000, 50, 56,000, somewhere around there. Everybody was exuberant. We thought this was it. This was great. It's going to keep going up. It never keeps going up. And it dropped 22%. Then one up 30 and 18 and 21, 26, 18. And then around here, after the big April move, which was it was above 60,000. I want you to remember, I just drew a line because I didn't want to go through these like little peaks and valleys. From a little bit after May, we were looking at around 56, 57,000. It dropped all the way down almost to almost 30,000, 33, somewhere around there. That was a 65% drop. And we thought, well, maybe this is it. And of course, it was 43, and then 24, and then 30. It was insane. But the big thing is, is that this is going to happen again. 
it's going to happen again. There's going to be massive volatility. Five to 10% isn't enough, isn't, isn't a thing. When we're talking about 65, 25% swings, that's when things get serious. And that's when you really should have a plan in hand. And that's why there's a link in the description. And I'm, I talk about these seven or eight different indicators of what I'm using to sell my uh, crypto, my Bitcoin, my digital asset. I'm going to sell up to 80% of everything. And why? Well, it's, I've told this, I've said this ad nauseum, but you know, I keep 20% around because you never know when, you know, who knows, maybe XRP becomes the world reserve currency. I don't know. So you hold on to that because uh, things could really go, not just a moonshot, but like Jupiter shot, something crazy like that. But just remember this, this is going to happen. It's going to repeat happening. And uh, today's just another day. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Also, I made mention real quick of the macro environment. And uh, to get to wrap your head around what's going on in the macro, I always like, like th th there's a great channel, David Lin. Uh, he brings on a lot of smart people, a lot of uh, macro economists and a lot of different people who are very smart in the, in, the, in, the, in the area, macroeconomics and what's going on. And one thing that I've learned from that channel is nobody knows, nobody knows where things are going. You can have an equally smart person. You can have a Steve Hankey on there and he can tell you, oh, you know what? I think things are going to be, I mean, we beat inflation. It's going to be fine. We might hit a little bit of a recession, but it's not going to be too awful. And the next guy, equally as smart, could say, you know what? We're going to go to depression tomorrow. And this just reinforces my, my thought process. This is from uh, Genevieve, Genevieve uh, Roach Dector, CFA. She is a money manager. Where is she from? Uh, Grid Capital, top finance newsletter on Beehive. She's been on Fox and Vice and all that great stuff. So what she took a look at was all the different uh, macro experts who are bearish and or bullish. And I thought it was interesting. Let me see. Of how many are like, they're kind of in between, but it's all across the spectrum. You got Ray Dalio, who's a, she says she calls it a mild bear. And he's like, yeah, cash is king. And you got uh, uh, Steve Cohen. He's bullish. He thinks everything's going to go up to the moon. You got Bill Ackman, who's whatever the heck he's doing. It's unknown at this point. And you got Ken Fisher, majorly bullish. Ken Griffin uh, from Citadel. He's mildly bearish. Michael Burry of The Big Short. He's super bearish. Bill Gross and Stan Druckenmiller, bearish. And this goes on and on and on. And Warren Buffett is mildly bearish. And I just I find this just fascinating because I think to myself, I'm like, how can you really navigate these waters without just, just kind of sticking around until the big bull run comes? I'm not that smart. So I'm just kind of accumulating as time goes on, looking for some indicators and some blow off tops. And hopefully I get to within 60% of the top and I will be super happy. Anyhow, let me just think about that as a recourse. And then finally, just to, just to finish up before we uh, get into the q and I want to say thank you, Tangem, for listening. I, um, the Tangem wallet, cold storage device, link in the description, only affiliate links. You don't have to use it, but if you don't, you won't get 10% off. But they just added on uh, Near, which is, fan which is great because Near is deprecating their um, browser wallet and you have to move everything over. So I actually sh shot everything from uh, the wallet itself because Ledger, you can use it, but you got to, you have to use the actual browser. And I shot all my near back to, Coin, to, to uh, Coinbase. And now this is great because once I update the app, I can put all my near back onto my, or finally onto my Tangent wallet. So that's just one more thing that they've done as well as an upgrade to their app itself. And then finally, I just want to talk real quick about Cardano and Midnight. So apparently they just had the, um, the Cardano Foundation. There was a big event. Uh, I think this was in uh, Austin, correct me in the comment section. And uh, big event, and they they announced that they're going to have another chain called Midnight. And apparently, this is within the Cardano ecosystem, but it's going to run in parallel. Uh, data protection will empower regulation-friendly apps. Interesting. That safeguards sensitive commercial and personal data. Developers and organizations can quickly build innovative apps with an easy to use programming model based on TypeScript and zero knowledge proofs. So this apparently is going to be coming out. No one really knows when per se, they know they're building it. The devs are, are uh, working, I guess, feverishly on this to 
but it's going to be, it's going to take months for them to actually release it. But the big thing, which I found over here at uh, front of the shows, uh, Paul Cardano with Paul, uh, check out his channel. He does really in-depth, great stuff with, with uh, Cardano. And uh, there was a quick video he had. This was the, uh, this was the CEO, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, Aaron Barak, Barak. And he explains, this is like in uh, 40 seconds what midnight is. So I'm just going to, hopefully Paul doesn't give me a copyright notice like uh, Dave Ramsey did. So we'll see. Yeah, but just take a listen to this. This uh, kind of sums it up. Midnight is looking to be a partner chain to Cardano. A partner is, you know, both sides get something. It has to be a win-win. So we would like to leverage the ecosystem of Cardano to help us go to market and get to decentralized fast. In exchange, we will provide SPOs and exchanges with both new revenue sources as well as incentives. We will provide developers with use cases and a fund to help them create more interoperability between the networks. And as was shared last year, I believe everybody here is an ADA holder. ADA holders will get a token drop for midnight so everybody can get access to this utility. Yeah, rad. So uh, that's pretty good. So everybody who owns uh, ADA, and uh, I've talked to my team uh, for our, because we're our stake pool operators for Cardano, and we will be supporting this. So of course, if you have your Cardano stake with DNews, you will be getting that airdrop of midnight whenever we learn about the details and how it all works out. But right now, this are the things we know, and it uh, looks pretty good. If you want to learn more about midnight, uh, check out uh, Cardano with Paul. Link is in the description, and that's it for today. So look, if uh, you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, but that's it for today.